Mothers are the queens of the castle, but let's be real. It's not all ball gowns and glass slippers. On this podcast, we're giving you a peek behind the throne at the privilege and responsibility of wearing the crown. My name is Helen Hope Kimbrough, and I'm a proud wife and mom of two adult sons. And I'm Charlita Hatch, a proud wife, married to my high school sweetheart, and a proud mom to two little ones. Get ready as we share jewels with each other and you around all things connected to motherhood. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Good to be back on the mic. I feel like we are doing a succession of guests uh, coming to the Behind the Throne podcast. And so today we actually have Kristen Stiegel, uh, CEO of Novice Studios, Charlotte. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Um, I don't have favorite clients, but you know what? If I had to make a list, I mean, you guys are pretty close to the top. Oh, we love we working love with that. you guys. So it's just, it's really exciting to be here. Yeah. And we thought it was important to bring uh, Kristen on to um, our podcast because she's the person who's behind the scenes and making us look good. And oftentimes people will ask us like, how are you doing your podcast? How are you producing those? And so we really wanted to make certain that we lifted you up and brought you forth so that we can share some of your talent, but then also some of the things that go on behind the scenes as well. Yes. And I'm just so honored that you said yes to moving from behind to the mic and we can learn from you and our audience can also learn some tips and tricks from you as well. Yeah, I'm excited to share. Yes, yes. So tell us a little bit about Novice Studios and why you created it. Yeah, so I started Novice Studios in 2020. Uh, the beginning, what we thought was the middle of the pandemic ended up being the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, I had been working in video production at a branding agency and had done a little bit of everything, graphic design, video production, even web development and coding here and there. So really touched a little bit of everything. And I decided that I wanted to kind of go in all in on my own things. I was interviewing for my dream job actually at a video production company and I was like, this is it. This is the producer role. I can't wait. And then COVID happened and they went on a hiring freeze. So I was like, you know what? Let me just bet on myself. Yes. 2020 was a hard year. Yeah. And I was like, the worst that happens is I just take a break from working and then I go back. But um, it ended up, I ended up never going back. It picked up really quickly. We started with having YouTube production and podcast production separately, eventually combined them. So we are a video podcast production company and the rest is history. It's just taken off from there. Congratulations. That I is know, awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. And I think so often we keep hearing about people betting on themselves, but I also love as a woman of color that you took that leap and you bet on yourself and not just a woman of color, but also a mom. So how was that? Yes. So my dad loves to brag that I'm the first entrepreneur in the family. He was the first to go to college. And then I took it a step further. I got my master's and then started a business. So um, it, I think it's really cool to take that step back every once in a while and be like, oh, wow, this is this is huge. This is bigger than I give myself credit for sometimes. And actually, transparently, at the beginning of 2020, I had a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And that was also a big catalyst for this. I was I felt like I was totally out of control of my life. And I just wanted to do something that was just mine, take some of that power back. And mm -hmm. so then the business became my baby for a little while. And then I had my son, Jack, in the fall of 2022. And he's flipped everything upside down in the best <laughs> way possible. Um, and I'm still, you know, 18 months later learning how to balance both things, but mm -hmm. we're getting there slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. So I love how you talk just about the transitions and the seasons of life too, uh, ups and downs, ebbs and flows, because that's so important because things still have to keep moving. Right. Yes. And you decided that you were going to not just make up your mind and do something, but that you also wanted to own something. And so what is it from your background that helps you to set, decide that, you know what, I'm going to just put my foot forward and just do this thing? I have always been a very independent person. And I think my parents, sometimes they were scared of that. And then, but they very much fostered that in me. They were always letting me do my own thing. 
make my own choices. Um, I moved from Atlanta to North Carolina, five hours away from home for school, and built my own community of friends and met my husband and have done a lot of things where when I took that independent step and branched out on my own, only good things happen. Like, sure, I learned some lessons along the way, and there are things that I maybe would do differently, but I always learned so much about myself in the process. So that took some of the fear out of it for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I also like that you shared is that you built a client list like right away. So what do you think uh, in 2020 motivated and inspired people to say, you know what, I want to do video production. I want to do some podcast production. What do you think spurred that? Yeah. So I think people were looking for connection. Mm -hmm. They wanted to build a community. They wanted to be able to connect with people without having an in-person component to it, where they might've been hosting events or they might've been meeting up one-on-one -on -one with people for coffee. Instead, they were inviting them, hey, I have a podcast. Let's have a conversation about you and your background. So it became, a relationship building tool for the host themselves and the business owner themselves. But then they're also creating this resource where this person's bringing all their expertise to the table as well. So people were looking for that connection. They were looking to build their platforms. And I think at that time, podcasts were definitely in the beginning of a new upswing. So um, that was really cool to be a part of. Um, how do you help a novice podcaster? Because think we were novice when we started it. <laughs> and we, I think Charlita is the one who did the research basically. So how did you, you know, do that, Charlita? So I think, well, I think your idea. Yeah. And so we were trying to figure it out. And I think even if we take it back to just like our children's books and wanting to make sure that whatever we do is good quality and knowing our lane and like we knew we could bring the content and we knew we could bring the energy, but we're like, we want this podcast to look good. We want it to have a good look and feel. And so I actually was researching, saw your website, but then also got you through a referral. Yes. Um, and so it was a referral from like just people in the network that knew you. Mm -hmm. And so it just a testament to like your your brand, which you felt was new, but it had already started to uh, kind of speak for itself. And so I just think it's important though, that we can, we can do it all as women. We can do it all as moms, but do we have to? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's good to just step back and say, you're really good at this. So let me let you do this and let me do, let me do what I'm good at. And I don't think we do that enough as women, as moms, we try to do too much. Agreed. And I think we would have tried to piecemeal it. And it would not have looked good. And so I've seen some of your podcast videos where you say, you know, your success rate will be like this way if you try to do this or bringing in <laughs> podcast producers so your success rate can improve over time. So talk a little bit about just that alone. Yeah, I work with a lot of sometimes I'll work with people who already have a podcast that is put together with duct tape and bubble wrap. <laughs> And we have to take the pieces <laughs> apart and choose the pieces that we're going to keep and leave all the rest behind. So I do think that there are so many resources out there to learn how to podcast on your own. There's so many YouTube videos you can watch on the subject. And I think for a lot of people where it comes down to cost and not being able to afford a podcast producer, then yes, try it on your own. Don't let that hold you back from starting at all. But it's amazing when we work with people who trust us completely and they're like, exactly, I'm bringing the creativity. I'm I'm bringing my voice, the the energy that I have, and I'm going to let you do all of the editing and the stuff that I don't want to touch because we make sure that it sounds good from the very beginning, from the actual recording, instead of having then us, we have to like bubble, bubble gum and duct tape it together because the recording is bad. We get it right the first time when we work with you from the very beginning, and then we can make it even better in the editing process. And I would say it's not just the editing process. You helped us with our like brand of our podcast as we were going back and forth with the title for our podcast, mm -hmm. the intro and the outro, like sound clips, as well as the music, the photos that went along with it. I mean, it, it's really full service. It's not just video editing. Mm -hmm. Everyone says, you know, don't be a jack of all trades, like pick one thing to be really good at. And I try to just embrace being a little bit good at a bunch of different things. And I'm really, really good at the recording, editing. I have Adam on my team to help me on the editing side also. 
but I could do the design. I could do the photography. I can come up with that vision. I can come up with a strategy and figure out what colors go well together and how we put all of that, uh, you know, together in this beautiful branded package. And so I really do try to bring all those elements of my brain together to offer that full service. But I also think, especially for a novice podcaster, um, and particularly like if, if you're a mom, you know, trying to, you know, speak about a topic that you're super passionate about. I think having you have all of those services that are ultimately are connected from like an end to end podcast experience mm -hmm. makes it a little more affordable than yeah. if we had to go get our own like marketer, our own, you know, I don't know what they're called, musician, pod, podcast musician, <laughs> or a designer. photographer, yeah. designer. Like, mm -hmm. I think it also helps a novice when you're trying to test it out that you offer these packages that have everything that you need. I'm going to put that on my website because that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. You're welcome. <laughs> I know. And I we know. do love collaborating with other creatives, too. So I'm always happy to send people like the photographers I know who would do a great job and web designers. And if they're starting with like a brand new logo that's going to go on everything, then I'm like work with a designer, work with a branding strategist, like go niche where you need to. But to your point, like if we can do it in-house, then we we do our best to do that. You know, when you think about podcasts, especially when you think about um, just the different variations of like mothering and like mom topics, do you think there's still like space for other mothers to have a podcast? A hundred percent. I think just the fact that every single kid is different and every single mom is different and they all come from different life experiences and family dynamics those perspectives are needed. Like there is a story that you have that's going to make somebody else feel less alone. And so mm -hmm. it's worth sharing. And I think that being a, a female business owner and then also a woman of color, I think it helped my clients feel comfortable being that vulnerable in that space. Like they know who's listening to it on the other side and that there are shared experiences there. And I think that that helps them be more open um, on their own shows, which I think is the, the best thing that you could do is create that connection with your audience. And I think even for us as clients, I mean, it was important for us to also have a woman of color. So when we saw you represent rep representing that, like on your website, um, it was like, you know what? Let's go with Kristen specifically after we talk with you as well. We thought that was important. Oh, thank you. Um, so I do want to know, like, what are three things that people should keep in mind once they start a podcast. <laughs> okay. Number one is to be consistent. If you follow the behind the throne model, it's seasonal, which means that you guys get a break. So if you're a busy mom, you know that this work season is busier than that work season. You can plan around your life for your podcast and still be consistent. Or if you're weekly and you want to go all in weekly and definitely batch recording, planning ahead of time, recording a bunch of episodes at the same time, bringing in a producer that will film it for you so you don't have to worry about putting that time aside and setting up your house to record and all those things. Um, two would be have a strong brand from the beginning and a good goal in mind. So if your goal is connection, who are you connecting with? What's your audience? Like do all of that work up front. I think if you record willy-nilly and just whatever mm -hmm. topics on your mind on any given day, you lose the plot a little bit. The overall content will be inconsistent. Um, the promotion will be inconsistent because you don't know who you're talking to and where they live on the internet. So I think it's important to have that strategy really strong from the beginning. And then the third is you need to have video in 2024. It's really important for your podcast to be on video, to have that uh, presence on YouTube. There's so many different ways now that you can leverage YouTube. You know, actually don't even have to have a video podcast. You can connect your RSS feed and have the audio only version get distributed to YouTube. But again, if you're creating connection and people can see your face, that's the best way to do that. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. So I would love for you just to share a little bit about your experience with Behind the Throne with our audience, because we've been doing this for close to a year now. And what would you tell our audience? What would you tell their listeners? If you can find a co-host where when you get together, it's like magic, that is rare. And that is dynamite. It makes every piece of it easier. It, it's going to make the pre-production, like it sounds like when you guys get on the phone and talk about an episode, it's exciting, it's fun. 
when we get in the studio, it's like, even though you guys might have just seen each other, it's like seeing somebody that you haven't seen in forever. You're like, oh my God, I'm so excited to see. Like, that is amazing to that you guys have that dynamic together. And I think, you know, speaking for both Adam and I, co-hosted podcasts are one of our favorites to work on because when it's somebody by themselves, they are they're carrying the whole weight of everything on their back. You are either, you're writing the whole script by yourself. You're recording the whole thing by yourself. There's nobody to bounce back and forth with. And I think when you have that co-host dynamic, like you guys have, it's just a lot of fun, um, all aspects of it. And then, you know, to your point, you trusted us from the beginning to help with all the aspects of the show. And I think sometimes when people feel too like attached to it, to where, they, they can't let anybody else contribute creatively or they're overthinking, like, how's this going to be perceived? And what were you, you guys were like, we'll bring in crowns. It'll be behind the throne. We'll do jewel tones. It'll be so fun. I'm like, yes, I love it. And so you guys were able to be creative and like be – you were serious about the top. You're serious about the topics. You're serious about p- producing a good show. But you're not so attached to it that it was never going to see the light of day because you couldn't make a decision, you yeah. know? Having that trust there has been really good. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. that makes us feel good. Yeah, it does. And I I like that you think that it's fun because we feel that it's fun. Mm-hmm. And it's sometimes when it is your baby, right, and you are thinking about it, you just don't know how it lands, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's like, we think the topics are cool. We're all in. And we could talk about these things for hours. But, you know, it's, you have been such a good cheerleader for us behind the scenes of Behind the Throne. Every episode, you're like, yes, yes. We're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, try, we try to be that way. And I think when we're selective about the clients that we work with, like we feel that way about all of them. Like they're sending us content. We're like, yes, this is so good. Like, if they record it on their own, we can't cheer them on in person. You don't have me nodding behind the camera the whole time. But um, I think when we're able to work with clients that are excited about what they're talking about. And another thing about you guys is you're so connected in the community. Like, you already have this community of people. I feel like every time I'm out and about with you guys, we run into somebody that you know. Um, You guys are the mayor, the unofficial mayors of Charlotte. Um, And I think you have already established yourselves as people who are connectors in the community. And, And I think people are already look up to you in that sense. So now you have another way for people to connect with you, which is huge. Oh, oh thank you. That's so nice. I know. We're just going to have her just come in when we're having a bad day. I know. I we'll know. Just keep rewinding. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> uplift us, girl. Do it. Yes. So my last question, uh, why is it important to amplify your voice? You know, I talked about in 2020, people were wanting to have that way to connect with people. And we know that there's still a loneliness epidemic. It might be worse than ever. People are like friendships are changing. The way that we connect with people online is changing. It's really hard to scroll through social media and get the full picture of somebody's life. And you're just looking at all the highlight reels. But I feel like when you're able to share your voice, again, you're able to get more vulnerable. You're able to share what's actually going on. Like when you have that friend that's like, no, but really, how are you? Like, let's skip the I'm fine or I'm okay or whatever. Like, really tell me how you're doing. I think that that's where podcasts are thriving right now is the people who are willing to share more and share their stories, share what makes them special, share their expertise. I think we don't give ourselves enough credit ever for how much we know and how how much we can help people when we just show up as ourselves. So I, th- I think that's why people should be amplifying their voices now more than ever. I love yeah. that. And especially – knowing like a good number of your clients are women. I think still in 2024, women still are fighting for their voice to be heard, to be recognized, validated. We see it so much across the country with the politics and different things that are happening where you can you feel like women are starting to lose power. And so having this opportunity to say it loud mm-hmm. and be proud and and not have the censorship, I also think is really powerful because if we don't tell our own stories, mm-hmm. then people will tell them for us. Yeah. On listening platforms like Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, things like that, we're not seeing that suppression of an algorithm as much. Like if people are searching for it, then they're able to find your content versus trying to fight to get your voice heard on Instagram or TikTok. It's it's getting more and more challenging on those platforms. Mm. 
I just love that we had this conversation with you. We are just honored that you selected us. You chose us to work with and you've really helped us kind of take a dream I don't think we thought we had I know. and really yeah. put it out there. Yeah. So yeah. really want to thank you for that. And thank you for being willing to come from behind the scenes. Yes. And so with that, uh, wherever you are following Behind the Throne podcast, we invite you to like, follow, and subscribe. But we also invite you to like, follow, and subscribe Novice Studio Charlotte so you can get more tips from Kristen on how to amplify your voice. Bye, y'all. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Behind the Throne podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and comment below with your feedback. Check out future episodes from us as we discuss motherhood from babies to adults.